In the previous episode, I broke down in Turkey with a transmission problem, got the car fixed and broke down again 30 kilometers later with the same issue. In this episode, I tried to fix the problem once and for all. <sighs> Managed to drive 30 kilometers out of town after the repair, big repair of the transmission. And, um, you know, I was driving up like 80 kilometers an hour, just cruising, and suddenly I heard like a squeak and then like a clunk kind of noise and the car battery icon went on, I lit up and the gears stopped working. And here we are, waiting for the same mechanic. So Mike is doing some work over there and I'm just trying to understand what happened and whether Finally soon, I'll have a bit of luck. I'm Ava and I'm a full-time adventurer. I want to bring you on a journey that's all about being brave, experiencing the world and feeling truly alive. My travels have been one hell of an adventure so far, but last summer I bought an old Land Rover Defender and converted it into an off-road expedition truck. I now wander around the world and live in my 4x4. Hit subscribe to join my adventure crew and watch real raw travel videos every week. Oh, the mechanic is here, so let's hear some good news. I'm ready for it. Good news. <laughs> yeah, he's, he has a magic wrench. He just touches it and it works. Hello. It later turned out that this mechanic in Cappadocia made a serious mistake when reinstalling the transmission and made the whole breakdown a thousand times worse. We were going to go through the middle of nowhere, so we're 30 kilometers outside of Urugup. I'd rather this happen here than somewhere in the middle of it all that's true and by the way guys i'm not going to be reading the comments for this video because i know what the land cruiser owners shut up haters <laughs> we do what we want to say what you want mechanics i'm not reading the comments i'm not reading the comments i will and i'll be i'm gonna be super mean <laughs> the mechanic came to see what's wrong with the car came with some tools couldn't fix it so he ordered us a tow truck but the problem is that the tow truck will only arrive in two hours so I'm just kind of catching up on my morning routine, things I didn't get to do this morning. Washing my teeth, washing my hair, taking a shower, meditating, you know, just, just getting time to pass. <laughs> two hours it came in like 45 minutes ah, I love getting good news <laughs> yeah. well she's on a tow truck for the second time in one week let's see how this pans out the mechanic assured us that if it was his fault he didn't fix it properly the first time around and he's going to pay he's going to do the second Repair for free and pay for the tow truck. If it's something else, uh, uh, well, let's just say that the costs are adding up. During the course of this fiasco, I went through all five stages of grief. Denial. I'm just really, really, really hoping that it's a quick fix, that it's something small. Anger. Ah, kurva mat. Bargaining. Maybe we'll be able to go again on the weekend. Sadness. Why does it keep happening? Acceptance. Starting to think we should just buy a tow truck of our own and just drive it around. Drive the world in the tow truck. <laughs> when I finally reached acceptance, that's when I realized that the obstacle is the way. I have to push through this. This is an opportunity for me to learn about my car and get to know the local defender community in Turkey. Moved out. Again. So, we rented a car, or rather, we sold the 4x4 <laughs> and we got another Ford Focus. Yay! Focus life. <laughs> Actually, so uh, Mike needs to get going. We talked about him staying, we talked about me going, we talked about different options, but it's clear that I just need to sit this one out, stay with Odyssey, and Mike needs to get on with his life and his <laughs> projects. <laughs> I had planned a few videos up north that we've already delayed for quite a few days now. Yeah, so we're just gonna go uh, get some stuff out of Odyssey, check up on her, See what's going on and then say goodbye for now. See what's going on.
by for now, for a week. <laughs> right, I'm gonna go to a coffee shop and do a bit of work. Meanwhile, Mike is going to drive to the same place that we were trying to drive to yesterday. I hope you have better luck on route. Get that truck fixed. <laughs> Bye, best. I'm gonna miss you. Bye. You guys, and you. <laughs> See you on the road. I spent the rest of the day figuring out my plan of action. I reached out to all my contacts here in Turkey. I couldn't believe just how helpful people were. A guy called Emre from Overland Anatolia put me in touch with another guy called Rifat, who sells defender parts to the Turkish army in the capital of the country. I knew I had to take Odyssey to a qualified mechanic this time, and so started to organize a tow truck to reach Ankara. Look, you've got to believe me when I tell you this story, because this is stranger than fiction. So I was pretty convinced that the truck, the tow truck would come tomorrow in the afternoon. But as you can see, it's not the afternoon and it's still very much today. So it is, what time is it? It's 10 p.m. 9.55 to oh. be exact. And uh, apparently the tow, the tow truck just arrived. So I had to like leave my hotel urgently and uh, rush over to the mechanics. We're going to the capital of Turkey, guys. We're going to Ankara. Well, Odyssey is here. The mechanic is very much closed, but we uh, called them, well, I called them with the help of a Turkish speaking friend to get the car out of the garage because we would be coming at an unreasonable time with the Chikiji. And the Chikiji is the tow truck. And Chikiji is the word that I will never forget in Turkish. Never, because I've had to use it so many times in the last week or so. Chikiji. Forever embedded in my memory. An Odyssey's memory. I guess now we just have to wait. I'm lucky that I've got a home on wheels that I can sit inside. Is my transmission some more parts. So we're taking all of this stuff to Ankara to a very qualified mechanic who I hope will bring an end to my car woes and we might get there by 2 a.m. tonight. Here we go. He's arrived. <laughs> Let's get this show on the road. And uh, back in the tow truck for the third time this week. Chicka chee. Wouldn't it be ironic if the tow truck broke down with a broken truck on top of it? <laughs> the driver is adding water, like mineral water, to the engine. I don't, I don't, I don't know what he's doing, but I'm just gonna have to trust the process. pulled over by the police. It's 2 a.m. I have no idea what's going on. I've just been kind of napping away. Well, the problem wasn't a problem. We just had to turn on the lights in my car. And now it's all sorted. The police have left. We're just fueling up. And we should be on our way again shortly. That was a journey and a half. A drive that should have taken three or four hours took us seven. It's now quarter past six in the morning. It's still dark and I'm alone in this industrial zone of Ankara, Turkey. I need to sleep in my car tonight, well, for the next two hours before the workshop opens. But my bigger problem is that I really need to pee. But let me show you around this place.
Well, there's that bush over there. That seems like the only reasonable place where I could, I could go and do it. Should I go for it? I think there's CCTV around here. There was probably CCTV around here, but I didn't really have a choice. And in case you've forgotten, I also don't have that much shame. I just hope that these dogs don't jump out of the workshop and bite me in the butt. Don't tell anyone. Well, the car is filled with spare parts. They are absolutely everywhere in the front and here. So I cannot actually extend my bed. I'm gonna have to sleep on like a quarter of a bed tonight because I can't take these out. What am I even doing? <laughs> Tell me, what am I doing with my life right now? You know, I would totally go to a hotel. I would, but I'm in the middle of nowhere and I'm so shattered that I just have no energy to go anywhere right now. <laughs> So I'm basically just doing this to myself. <laughs> well, this is probably the least comfortable setup I've experienced in this car as of yet. But you know, at the end of the day, I'm just taking a quick nap. <laughs> I'm not really expecting to get a very good night of sleep. So I have to get cozy here with my spare parts and my transmission <laughs> for the last time. Oh, oh yes, a warm duvet. Oh my god. Oh. Mm. See you in an hour. Oh, that was cold. That was a cold hour and 10 minutes. Oof. I think like very close to zero degrees, maybe two degrees Celsius. And I couldn't turn on my heater even though I have one because of all the stuff that's in here. It's just the car is completely packed and I didn't want to risk setting it on fire. Okay, now I understand why I was so freezing during my nap. It's because I have a gaping hole in the middle of my truck instead of a gearbox. Tow truck number four. River Hospital. How appropriate. Before I go to the bathroom, I want to show you that I think I got to the right place. <laughs> this is all just Land Rover parts, a lot of them Defender parts, and there's several floors of this in this building. <laughs> Finally, I see a light at the end of the tunnel. So Rifat here is building his own Defender from scratch. This is just the chassis and the wheels and this will be a proper car in a little while he's going to build it himself using the parts that he himself sources and sells on i think i'm in good hands <laughs> rifat welcomed me like family 
He took me around the industrial zone of Ankara and home to all the mechanics in town, introduced me to everyone and promised to help me out with anything I needed. He really turned out to be my guardian angel. We're just doing the rounds and visiting uh, some of Rifat's colleagues here in the industrial zone and I gotta show you this place. This is like the coolest office I've ever seen in my life. Right, well this is a car couch. Wow, you're actually sitting in the back of a car, but it's cut in half and obviously all the stuff from inside like taken out, it's all gutted. But this is an actual couch, like a legit couch. Man, am I becoming like a car fanatic? Oh, it's <laughs> sofa bed. Rifat's kids are helping me um, <laughs> bathe my gearbox, basically. So I'm getting plenty of assistance here, which is great. I'm not complaining. The gentleman behind me is the transmission surgeon or the transmission doctor. He is checking to see whether we can repair my really messed up ground up transmission, if there's any chance of fixing it, or alternatively, we'll let us know in a few minutes if we need to buy a new one, which would be hella expensive. So here's the crux of my problem. My gearbox shafts took a serious beating and because of a poorly installed transmission the first time around, a couple of the gears actually melted down. You can see the damage even without knowing much about car mechanics. Isa here has been fixing Defender transmissions specifically for the last 20 years for the Turkish army. As he worked away, I tried to make the time a little bit more pleasant for everyone with the simple pleasures. <laughs> been a very long day. It's 10.40 p.m. I haven't slept since yesterday and I'd really love to go to sleep. by Isa yesterday and today is a new day and today is the day that the gearbox will be installed back in Odyssey. I've been given permission to go inside the car. Whoa, 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 whoa. Special access. Look at this. <laughs> Hello. Hello. So it looks like the gearbox is finally about to go back inside the car, which is really, really exciting. And you know, just watching these guys work, I'm actually finding it really inspiring to like learn more about mechanics and about my own car. Something that I just never thought I would be capable of, but I'm like motivated now, which is great. Sometimes these things happen and I'm like, why is this happening to me? Like, I just, I just wanna like not have issues or problems anymore. But at the end of the day, like I think taking a crisis as an opportunity is probably the best way of dealing with a crisis and I just need to be more conscious of that going forward and that's that's the attitude I want to adopt in my life. What do I do? Where? This side? This side? Like that? Come on. Okay. You show me. I was hitting the wrong thing. Turkish tea. Yes. Three sugars, don't judge me. Well, I've had quite the welcome here in the workshop. I've just been um, sitting here drinking chai, filming, watching the guys work, trying to learn something. And the car is almost ready, it seems. I'm very excited to take it for a test drive. High hopes, high hopes this time. I went deeper into learning about car mechanics and signed up for an online course. But I gotta be honest with you, once you start learning about how a car works, you realize that it's actually quite terrifying. I mean, the way the engine works, it creates thousands of explosions per minute and they're, they're all just blowing up there under the bonnet of the aluminium box that you're driving at 100 kilometers an hour. Dude, what the hell? How would that not freak you out? Mm. 
Rifa, this is your defender. Yeah. <laughs> so check this out. Rifa is actually pretty much building it from scratch. So it's like just coming down the chikiji right now. But there's nothing inside just yet. TD5. Oh. That's my engine. <laughs> gearbox the same. Same like mine. Yeah. Same gearbox, same engine. He's a true Defender fan because he is building his car from scratch. As you can see, like the just step by step. Oh, nice. Okay. Alright. Oils are back in the gearbox and the transfer box, so it's time to bring her down and go for a test drive. No start. Well, it's evening time. We are still working on one, hopefully last thing. And uh, though I was really hoping to leave today, it looks like one more night here in Ankara. With traveling the world, overlanding in a car, I guess you just have to be patient sometimes. And things like this happen, and as much as it annoys me or infuriates me, I'm really doing my best to like learn to cope with it in a more stoic, let's just say. Spending one more night in Ankara does not sound good. It's annoying, but I'm just gonna take it for what it is. Maybe it's supposed to be, maybe it's meant to be. It's fine. Bye, Odyssey. See you tomorrow. Today is day 10 or maybe even 11 of the whole breakdown saga and I hope it's the last day. And I was just sitting here thinking about the things that this experience gave me. Because you know, focusing on the positives generally makes life a little bit easier to live in my opinion. And I'm so glad because this experience, this breakdown gave me an interest in mechanics. I just signed up for a mechanics course which is really exciting and I'm really interested to find out more and learn more about my car. It gave me friends here in Ankara, people who really, you know, prioritized my repair over everything else and tried everything in their power to get me out of here. People who really had my back. And if people like that exist here, they probably exist in other places too. And that gives me a lot of faith for my ginormous project for 2022, which I'll tell you about in due course. And three, I think most importantly, the gift that I got from this experience was do not fear. There will be obstacles in your way, but all you need to do is keep a calm head, break them down into small steps and just push through them. Push through the obstacles. You now there's this really great book I started reading called The Obstacle is the Way. And it's true, the obstacle is the way. So. I documented this entire breakdown, not just to document the story of the breakdown, but also to kind of share that and show you that the thing that I personally feared the most happened, and it was a pretty major one. And yet, despite all the frustrations and anger and sadness and confusion that I experienced, I'm still here, I'm still making videos, I'm still alive, still enjoying my days and just pushing through. You know, just pushing through that obstacle to get to the other side and emerge stronger, maybe with a little bit more experience. <laughs> but I do hope that I can get out of here today. I just want to go camping, oh my God. <laughs> ah. So what happened yesterday and the reason why we had to leave the car, thank you, in the garage for one more day and take out the gearbox again and do another repair on that is because of the oil pump um, in the transmission that wasn't working. It's this little part here. And apparently like it was just letting in a lot of oil, like letting it flow through, uh, which was causing a leak. So we had to switch this one for an original part, which was this one and that is much higher quality so that's uh, what that was the latest update <laughs> this is me <laughs> this is the defender right 
thank you so much. So I hear some drilling down below where the workshop is for the transmission. So I've just come downstairs to see what's going on. Lisa's working hard. <laughs> You like it? Yeah. Yeah? What's your favorite car? Uh, the Fender, yeah. What about you, John? What's your favorite car? The Fender. Yeah. <laughs> you know, indoctrinate them early on. It'll pay off later. <laughs> Nothing like a coffee on a Can go roof to rack the on top Can of a Defender. She has come down. The transmission is back in for like the third time, maybe fourth time in this entire repair. Second time in this very workshop. You know what I'm hoping. You know what I'm hoping. Can I get out of here today? The guys are busy checking a few last minute things after the test drive just to make sure that there's no leaks, that nothing is sitting in a weird place. Meanwhile, I'm just enjoying sitting by the fire because it's so cold. Here's the thing. Breakdowns happen. It's all part of the adventure. All part of the process. And the best thing about this process? Well, I realized once more that when I bought a Defender, I didn't just buy a car. I also became a part of a global community of people who love these cars just as much as I do. So whatever happens in the future, I know that it'll always be an opportunity to make new friends and learn something new. All right, we're gonna go for a little test drive to see if she's working properly. So far, so good. Dr. Ibrahim, come on. Okay. <laughs> it took me 350 kilometers of driving yesterday to believe that the Defender is actually fixed. But she is. <laughs> she's fixed. I drove all the way here to the beach and camped here last night and it's... I'm just so happy. And you know what? I'm happy that all this happened. I am happy that I had that breakdown. Not because I like breakdowns, but because it showed me that if I can deal with that kind of breakdown, I can deal with any kind of breakdown and it's gonna be fine. I'm grateful. No more fear. Let the adventure continue. I'm so excited. <laughs> in the next episode, I find myself at the end of the road in some very snowy mountains and survive sub-zero temperatures sleeping in my car for the very first time. See you next week. Mm -hmm.